Here they are, a small band of disciples, the inner circle, so it seems, of a larger group of followers. They follow Jesus up the mountain. He sits down, and so do they. He begins to speak, and they listen. You are salt, the teacher says, the salt of the earth. You are light, the light of the world. Oh, the disciples listened very closely. After all, what they're hearing are the words of Jesus. I mean, who knows, someday they might want to write it all down so that people will know who he was and what he said and, and what he did. But what they hear is very difficult. They don't know where their lives are headed. I mean, how can they know? Salt of the earth? Light of the world? What's he saying? What does he expect of us? What, what does all of this mean? Well, what they're hearing are hard teachings, especially when Jesus speaks about righteousness and, and the kingdom. The Pharisees and the, and the scribes, they're devoted to the religious teachings, and even those who are the most critical of them have to admit they do keep the law, and not only in spirit, they keep it right down to each and every individual letter. One can hardly imagine living a life that's more righteous than the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. And yet, isn't that what Jesus is telling them to do? Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. What? <laughs> We have to be better than they are? That's, that's impossible. We will never be able to live up to what Jesus expects of us. Peter looks at Andrew. Andrew turns to John. What keeps drawing us to this man? We have made a big mistake, have we? I mean, we've left our boats. We're following him. He expects so much of us. He expects oh, way too much the salt of the earth, the light of the world. That's ridiculous. That will never work. And they're probably right. There are, after all, only a small band of disciples, um, a few hundred followers, maybe a thousand or so curiosity seekers, but nothing more than that. They are a hodgepodge collection of poor folk and fishermen. Maybe they can tell the people in the next village. Maybe. They can even reach the people in the whole territory. But how can they be expected to do anything more than that? I mean, they're Jews. They are poor, simple Jews. They're not Romans. They can't change the world. So, here I am, looking into a camera. And there you are, the men, women, and children of the Central Southern Illinois Synod and maybe even a, a few others who happen to have found this recording on the internet. All of you are watching me on a screen. Some of you may have gathered in a sanctuary for worship, and others might be watching at home. But all of us have heard the words of Jesus as his disciples wrote them down. In the fifth chapter of Matthew, Jesus tells us, You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. All of us, and yes, I'm including myself in that all, we all listen to the words. But really, do we listen that closely? You see, we've heard these words so many times before. We know what Jesus says. Today's gospel is from the Sermon on the Mount, and we already know that message. We've heard that so many times that I'm thinking maybe even some of us might even have it memorized. There is nothing new in this sermon I'm preaching. So, our thoughts turn to other things. Should we go home and fix dinner? Or maybe let's stop along the way home and get something to eat. Oh, and while I'm thinking about food, what are we going to get for next Sunday's Super Bowl party? Valentine's Day, that's right around the corner. Better not forget to get a card. And some of the teenagers among you, they might be thinking they want to go out this afternoon with some of their friends, but then they remember there's that history paper they have to write, and it's due tomorrow. Our thoughts do go in a thousand different directions. We seldom think of what we're hearing. 
From their vantage point in heaven, the small band of disciples look down on the congregations and the members of the synod who are gathered in worship. Don't they know where their lives are headed, the disciples wonder? Don't they understand the implications of all the words that they just heard? Open your ears, the disciples shout. Listen to what Jesus expects of you from each and every one of you. Peter looks to Andrew, and Andrew turns to John. Could it be, they ask themselves? Is it possible that the members of that synod down there have the very same problem that we had back there on that hillside? They hear the hard teachings, and it scares the daylights out of them. They hear the hard teachings, and they hear those teachings as law. They hear Jesus say, here are the rules. You better obey them. In fact, whoever breaks one of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So much he wants us to do. Too much to do. We can't really be expected to do all that. We can't obey all the rules. We've already messed up, so, so why should we even try anymore? You know, with that attitude, it's no surprise that their thoughts are turning to where they're going to eat or, or to the Super Bowl party or to when they're going to get their homework done. The disciples knowingly look at each other. They had experienced those very same doubts. They had felt the fears. But eventually, the disciples learned. And thankfully, well, so will the people in those congregations. Jesus' teachings are hard. And the implications of them are clear. The expectations are high and, and they are very demanding. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. That is what the Lord is telling them. How scary those words were when Peter and the rest of them first heard them. How frightened Andrew was when he listened to Jesus' call. When John was told to leave his family and, and his job, he had no idea whatever what the future would bring. And yet, you know what happened? From that very little band of followers, the ones that were gathered there on the hillside, that word, that message, that good news spread. The disciples learned that Jesus was right. Unless righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, no one will or can enter the kingdom of heaven. The scribes and the Pharisees, they kept that law perfectly. But human perfection isn't enough. What's necessary is divine perfection. And that's exactly what Jesus provides. Remember, he didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And he fulfilled it perfectly. The righteousness of Jesus is absolute. And then, through his death on the cross and his Easter resurrection, Jesus' righteousness filled people of faith like you and me. People looks at Andrew. Peter looks at Andrew. Andrew then turns to John. They smile as they remember the wonder of that day. It happened 10 days after Jesus went back into heaven. They were gathered together for song and for prayer. And then there was a sound and the sight that they would never, ever forget. They had heard the wind blow. They had seen tongues of fire. God's Spirit had come and had filled each one of them. They had courage. They had strength. They had boldness. They had nerve. No, it was even more than that. On the day when the Spirit entered the hearts of those disciples, they were, each one of them, filled with great faith. Yes, they were salt, and yes, they were light. And the way they salted and the way they gave light was simple and plain, and now easy to do. Each one of them was a single grain of salt. Each one of them was a light of one candle. They were a hodgepodge collection of poor folk and fishermen who affected the life of people everywhere, everyone they met. They lived their faith faithfully, and the way they lived was seen by others. And those others wanted to know more about what filled the disciples. They were witnesses, 
and they each told another about the faith that filled them. And the good news of Jesus spread. Here we are. The people gathered in churches and homes on another Sunday morning. Here we are. People who have also been filled with great faith. Perhaps you don't remember it, but I think you do know when it happened. In the water of your baptism, God's Spirit came and filled you with tenderness and with love. God claimed you as His very own. You are salt, He said, the salt of the earth. You are light, the light of the world. And the way we salt and the way we give light is simple and plain, and it is a joy to do. Each one of us is a single grain of salt. Each one of us is that light of one candle. We are a hodgepodge collection of all kinds of people who affect the life of each person we meet. We live our life faithfully, and the way that we live is seen by other people, by people who want to know more about the joy that fills us and about the source of our faith. I mean, to live as salt, to shine as light, to show love and concern for each member of God's creation, and to share with them the very good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is our calling. This is our life. This is what we do. Amen.